hi guys and welcome to this video so for this video we are going to talk about things that you can do with tasks in ms project so this is the second part in the ms project series that i have for you guys if you're wondering how to create this gan chart you can watch the first video of the series the link of which i will put somewhere in the video or in the comment section or in the in the description of this video so now we have this project and we will explore things that you can do with tasks so here we have already created the project and like what we've discussed before one thing you can do with tasks is you can link them together by highlighting the tasks and then go into the task tab and click the link button so take note that when you create your charts or your tasks by default it will be unlinked and your tasks will all start on the same day now by linking them you're putting these tasks okay as prerequisites of one another okay so we have unlink and link and I hope you also noticed how the numbers here showed up when we linked the chart so or the tasks. So the numbers here mean that this specific task, identification of suppliers, is linked to row number four of our GAN chart, so to the previous task. Therefore, if you want to modify the links, you can simply change the number here. So for example, here we have preparation of budget, which is currently linked to the previous task of identification of suppliers. And let's say that we don't really have to wait for the suppliers to be identified in order to prepare the budget. After the interdepartmental meetings, we can already start preparing the budget. So to change the link, okay, then you can simply type the row number of the tasks that you want to link, okay, this next task. So here, we're going to change this into four, simply by going there, oops, and typing the number four. And then enter, and notice how the bar in the Gantt chart will also update. So you would notice that the bar moved and the arrow is now coming out from the row force arrow. So that's how to change the linking of the tasks. So let's say another one here. We have the pay the suppliers. So let's say that we want to sort of like start paying some of our suppliers. So all you have to do is type the number six here and that changes the predecessor as well if you realize that you made a mistake then you could simply undo or type the number again of the previous task number you can also modify the days assigned to your tasks but take note that if you change the day for example here client meeting will take two days all the succeeding tasks will also update accordingly so a while ago it was like this so we have here august 1st and then the next task will start on the 2nd of august but if we change this to two days then the next task will have to start on the 3rd of august you will notice that there are blue shade that showed up here and this means that this cells updated they changed because of that action so you could easily see what happened to some of the tasks so as you can see no change in the client meeting start date because well it's not affected by that future event now other things that you could do with tasks is that you can also force a certain day or a certain task to start on a certain day so let's say that the part we're in, we're going to pay the suppliers, can be done later or earlier. 
So let's say I want to move this to an earlier date. So all you have to do then is drag that task to the left. Okay. If you want it to start early. And remember that whenever you do changes in your project, in your tasks, you will get the planning wizard to sort of like confirm what exactly do you want to happen in your task. So here we have the option to just cancel and keep the existing link as before or confirm that you're removing the link and move the pay suppliers to start on August 8th. Because remember, if you drag that bar or that task to the left, it means that technically that task doesn't have to wait for the previous task to end. So that is why the link will be removed, right? So click OK. And you will notice that there's no more line, okay, in connecting those two bars. And you would also notice that the succeeding tasks also updated okay so you will see that this uh, dates here also changed another thing that you could do with tasks is you could also turn them inactive so let's say, just assuming, we have here interdepartmental meetings and there's an option to inactivate under task. You should see here, inactivate. So when you inactivate a task, the previews and the next task will sort of like link to one another. And that is because making a task inactive means that that, that task is sort of like on hold and that task should not affect the next task anymore. And you may wonder like, why should we not just delete that task? Because you can delete task by right clicking and delete task. And the reason why you would inactivate a task is when you currently don't know if that task will should go away or you're waiting for a response from your supervisor like should this task proceed is this something that you can just let go so you could sort of like inactivate it for now and let's say you have your final word if it's already should be removed then you can permanently delete the task or if your manager told you to proceed with that task then you can sort of like activate it again and see how that new update from your manager will affect the other tasks so that's the reason you would use the inactivate button or inactivate feature of ms project another thing we can do with tasks is we can sort of like split the task into several days so let's say that we have here our construction phase our build phase so it will start from the august 17th and then the 13th of september and you can actually split the task like let's say that there's going to be like a holiday in between this week so there's an option so click the build or click the task first and then there's an option here that says split the task so click that and your cursor will now change it to this icon that has two lines and an arrow to the right signifying what you should do so let's say that I have to cut the task from here at this point and cut move to the right so you're sort of like creating this holiday or this one day that this day uh, this task will not um, will not proceed or maybe on hold or maybe you're on a holiday or something so that's what the split tasks can do you can split a task like more than once if needed and then you could like move the segments and you would notice that the dates are being updated. So we have the blue squares. And you would also notice that the construction phase 
updates as you keep on dragging fields. So let's say that right now it ends on September 30th. But if I decided to adjust it one day, so it moved to September 29. If you want to return split tasks, you can simply drag the bars and put them back together. And that would undo the split that you created for that task. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about in this video is we're going to show you how to create a recurring task in MS Project. So recurring task could either be a meeting or uh, a, a, a coaching session or whatever that has to happen like at, at several times during the project. So the first thing you have to do when you want a recurring task in MS Project is you have to position the cursor somewhere where you want that task to show up. So if you want that recurring task to be outside the faces of the project, you can click the blank cell right under the last task in your Gantt chart. And then go to task tab and then go to task, insert task. From here, you will see the recurring task tool. So we have to provide the name for our task. So let's say this is weekly meeting. And the weekly we meeting will be like one hour. You can then set if the meeting will run on a daily basis, weekly, monthly. And does it uh, when does it occur? Like does it occur every Monday? You could even like choose two days if you want. So meaning it happens twice a week. Do you want to make it happen every week or should it be every other week? So change this to two and that means every other week. Increase it further and that means every three weeks. So if you want something that happens on a weekly basis, then this has to be one. So every one week, there's a meeting. And then the next part of the recurrence tool is to set the start date, like should it start on the start of the project, August 1st, or you could start like later in the project. You can set how many occurrences should happen or another method to determine the last meeting is to set the last day that it's possible to plot a weekly meeting. So that date there, uh, September 26, is because that's the last monday that we have okay before the project ends and once you've identified this one you can now click ok and that recurring task will now show up where your cursor was a while ago and you will notice that it is now part of the chart and ms project sort of like created placeholder meeting names for each of the meeting you can see that they also are represented in the Gantt chart if you find it a little awkward that there are these dots or squares in your Gantt chart you can level them up so click the arrow beside the weekly meeting and you would see that instead of having them broken down into several rows the bars in the Gantt chart will show up in one line so for me this one looks better and I'll keep it this way for now and then once you're done with all these tasks you can then save your work of course and the next thing is you would now create okay or assign resources to your task so we'll talk about that in the next video but for now i hope you hit the like and subscribe button and if you have any questions about this feel free to use the comment section and i'll try to answer as soon as i can thank you guys and i'll see you in the next video